Good afternoon, students. So today, before we move on to talking about some pre-algebra things that's kind of coming up in our next unit, we are going to take some time today to talk about properties of numbers. These are certain properties that work when we're looking at different situations with numbers, um, and they're really going to help us when we start to do kind of our next units, not units, uh, assignments, I should say, that involve exponents, order of operations, solving equations, and so forth. So um, if this is your second time watching the video, go ahead and take a moment to pause and copy down what you see on the screen. All right, and so we're going to jump into talking about these properties of different numbers and you'll notice that we're kind of in two sections we have our addition properties and we have our multiplication properties and we're going to talk about why we have addition and multiplication properties versus um, having subtraction and division properties. So let's take a look at the first one. The first property is additive identity. So identity is when we want to keep the value of a number the same. So when we add, let's say we have the number X, X could be any number. If we want to keep X's value value the same and we want to add something to x the property of additive identity says that if we do x plus zero that is going to be equivalent to the number that we started with or x so we're not changing the identity of x when we add zero to it the next thing we're going to talk about is the additive inverse and this goes back to our conversation about a zero pair this is saying that when we add opposites together their value is going to be zero um inverse is another word for opposite so let's say i have this number x again if i add the opposite or the inverse so the negative version of x so like if this was three the inverse or the opposite would be negative three when i add these inverses or the opposite together what happens is I get a value of zero. I'm going to put a line through this so it looks like a zero. That's just a trick that I do to help signify what's a letter and what's a number zero. Um, so that's the property of additive inverse. The next two properties are all about kind of like the order in which we add numbers. So the associative property says if we're adding multiple things. So let's say we have A, B, and C. We're adding these three different things up. The associative property says that we can kind of add them in any order. So we could add A and B first, and I'm going to signify that by putting parentheses around it, or I could do um, B and C first. I could add B plus C first and then add a and I put parentheses around b plus c to denote I'm going to like add those two first or I could rewrite it a third time I'm not going to but you know I could do a plus c and then b so the associative property says that I can add numbers up in really any order um, we're going to get the same thing uh, the commutative property kind of on a similar train similar path says that we can add numbers um in any order as well so for instance, if I have A plus B, I could do A plus B or I could flip it. I could do B plus A and I get the same thing, right? Like two plus three is the same as three plus two. And you'll notice with the associative and the commutative property, they work for addition, right? If I had like one, two, and three, one plus two plus three is the same as two plus three plus one just like how I did with the other example of two plus three. However, the same thing doesn't really work with subtraction, right? Two minus three is not the same thing as three minus two. One of them's a positive number and one of them is a negative number. So these two properties only work, you'll see in a moment, they only work for addition and multiplication. So these are all of our properties of addition. Let's talk about our properties of multiplication. So the first one is multiplicative inverse. And this is kind of the fancy way of saying the reciprocal. So when we talked about dividing fractions, we looked at this term reciprocal. It's probably a term you learned in elementary school. So what the multiplicative inverse property says is if we take a number, let's say X, and if we do one over that number, so one over X, and we multiply them together, I'm going to use the dot to mean multiplication. This is the same thing as x over one, remember any whole number, we can rewrite it as a fraction of something over one times one over x. If we multiply these fractions, x times one is just x because anything times one is itself. One times x is x because again, anything times one, it's just itself. And we have x over x, anything divided by itself is going to be one whole. 
Okay. Now I know that may seem a little bit confusing because I used X, but like, let's say for instance, I use the number two. Okay. So like two times one over two is the same as two over one times one over two, two times one would be two. One times two would be two. Two over two is equivalent to one. So this is saying if we take any number and do one over that number, we're finding what's called the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal. And when we multiply reciprocals together, the answer is always one. And when we talked about fractions, the reciprocal of a fraction is just when we flip flop the numerator and denominator, which is kind of like what we did here, right? We took X over one and we flipped the numerator and denominator to one over X. So multiplicative inverse is the fancy way of saying finding the reciprocal of a number. Um, let's look at the last three. The multiplicative identity is when we have a number, again, let's say X, and we want it to be equivalent to X, but this time we want to use multiplication. Well, the multiplicative identity says that if we do X times one, that does not change the value of the number, right? Anything times one is just itself. So that's what the multiplicative identity is defining. And then the associative property and commutative property are similar to what we did up here, but this is saying, for instance, if we have A times B times C, what we can do is we can multiply A times B first, then multiply by C, or we could do B times C first and then multiply by A. And you'll notice um, we're going to get into this when we talk about pre-algebra. When we have letters, um, we can just write letters right next to parentheses. We can write um, letters right next to other letters. And anything, some, anytime a letter is right next to parentheses or right next to another letter, um, that means multiplication. So this is saying that we can kind of multiply in any group. We can multiply the first two and then the third or the second two and then the first, and we'll get the same value. Um, the commutative property, same thing. So if we do A times B, so I'm just going to write A, B because that represents A times B. That's equivalent to if we just did B times A, right? Two times three is the same as three times two. Um, so here you have all of these different properties. They come into play a lot when we talk about the order of operations and when we get into pre-algebra. So it's kind of important that you at least remember uh, what they represent. Remember, identity is representing you know, the value of something um, on its own without changing its value. Inverse is talking about how can we kind of look at the opposites? So in addition, we're looking at, you know, the opposite values, a positive and the negative version of that number and multiplication opposites kind of represent with reciprocals. Um, and then the associative and commutative property are all about, you know, the groups and the order that we can add and multiply. Um, and again, this wouldn't work for division, just like how this wouldn't work for subtraction, right? Like two divided by three is not the same as three divided by two. So these properties only work for addition and multiplication. If this is your second time watching the video, I'm going to go ahead and show you the practice problems for this. They're pretty straightforward. So go ahead and take a moment to pause and copy them down. Okay, and if you have trouble reading my writing, these practice questions say, why does subtraction not work for the commutative property? So you could give an example. Number two, multiplicative inverse is the same as finding what? And then number three, provide an example of the associative property of multiplication. So using actual numbers, uh, provide an example of what that would look like. If you guys have any questions, please make sure you write them in your need to ask section, and I will see you guys soon. Have a great day.